in the world, there are dangerous love affairs, and they they kind of they kind of don't seem bad. Like we we fall in love with these things, and we're we're drawn by them. And so we're going to look at five dangerous love affairs that um, all of us are. Um, prone to that we can find find ourselves in the problem with with these things is they are they're more subtle um, than some things in our life. Who's confused by that word, by the way? Why did we spell it S U B T L? I mean, re- re- just can we just all decide to throw rebellion and just start spelling words like they sound? Like it's sub subtle, sub subtle, subtle. And you are shafted if you're young, trying to sound out a word. Do you remember your teacher sounded out? Subtle. She goes, no, that's not right. Well, that's what it says, right? How, how about how many of you struggle with ADD or ADHD? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> and what's the first thing they want to do? I want to give you a test to see if you have it. That's why I'm here. I can't take a test. For longer than two minutes. Is your test two minutes long? Okay, you got it. Like, okay. And then who struggles with a reading disorder where words are flipped backwards? I mean, I'm why, why would you name something that somebody struggles with reading dyslexia? <laughs> what in the world are we doing to people? And you're like, does this have anything to do with the kingdom of the Lord? Yes, it does. <laughs> it's funny, and yes, it does. Because here's what the world does. The world tries to overcomplicate things. And, and the world system is to make it super complicated so um, that we can't see into the simplicity of the kingdom. And the world wants to confuse you into believing that, hey, if, if it's subtle, <laughs> then maybe it's not too bad. And, and to fall in love with these things is not necessarily wrong. And there is a way to manage all the things that I'm going to talk to you about. But the problem is, is when you have a love affair with these things, they're, they're super dangerous because they do pull you away from God. And so this is not so much a, like a, um, this is not like last week's conversation where Josh and I kind of challenged you and like, hey, here's the danger of, of Christianity. These, this is just the danger of living life. This is the thing, these are some of the things that want to come in and rob you of a true relationship with Jesus where your life is actually transformed. So, so the first dangerous love affair is this, loving the praise of men more than the praise of God. Like, like living a life to please other people um, rather than living a life to please God. John 12 verse 42 says, yet at the same time, many Um, Many even among the leaders believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. They all understood who Jesus was. They, They looked in his direction like they're like, okay, this is like the legit Messiah, but because of the pressures of being accepted by other people, they they wouldn't openly talk about who they knew Jesus to be, who Jesus was to them. Why? Because it, the verse ends, they loved the praises of people more than they did God. Um, they learned the truth, knew the church, truth, but wasn't going to talk about it because that would cost them something. Um, they cared a little bit more about their social position. And because of that, they weren't willing to have um, confrontation about the real truth. Have you ever felt that way in your life? You're doing life, you're trying to get along, you're trying to make a living, you're trying to stay in a happy marriage, happy home, whatever, but you find yourself in this, in this locked up position like, when should I be vocal? How should I be vocal? And if I am, what's that going to cost me? John 7, 13 says, but no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of their leaders. Proverbs 29, 25 says, fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. I'm going to be honest with you, um, there's probably not a time in history, maybe other than the first century, that your voice is needed out loud. Um, the t- like this is going to sound, um, this may sound like I'm against scripture and I'm not, so give me time to clarify it before you like pull this out. A, a, a time for just silent prayer is over. A time where we're just going to pray and hope that it changes that time's over in, in Christianity. That time's over. If you're serious about 
serving the Lord, you can't stay silent on the millions of issues that are happening in our town, happening in our school system, and happening in our world. It's just not going to cut it anymore. And the time to like, well, we're just going to be quiet and pray. I think you should pray in your closet. I, you absolutely should. But that prayer is to activate your voice and your actions to start making a difference in the world that we live in. So I will tell you, you're, if you speak up, you're not going to be accepted publicly. It's not going. If you speak up for um, or against and for biblical gender identification, because there's just two. If you speak up and for biblical marriage, uh, masculinity, femininity, anything that the kingdom, anything the Bible says, like it's for real in there, if you stand on that, you're going to be ridiculed, you're going to be hated, people will not accept you. And so are you finding yourself in a dangerous love affair where I don't want to wrinkle feathers, I don't want to cause confrontation, so I'm not really going to be that public vocal about my true values? That's dangerous. Um, and we'll talk about why that's so dangerous when we get toward the end. So the second love affair is this. Loving money more than God. Loving money more than God. 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 10. But God in this with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and trap into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and, faith and pierced themselves with many transgressions. So verse 6 and verse 9, Paul says um, he's calling us to a life of, of godliness and contentment. Um, he warns of like the dangers that pursuing riches, and this is a motive issue, but pursuing riches can happen. And the truth is human nature, apart from the power of the Holy Spirit, is always going to be greedy and selfish in nature. Like you're always going to you're always going to want more, want more, want more, want more. Proverbs 27:20 20 says, "Death and destruction are never satisfied, and neither are human eyes." Like without the spirit of God inside you, your eyes are never satisfied. Your your want your desires. It's it's why that when you get something new and you see someone with something newer, it makes you want that thing. I mean, that's true for all of us in some way, unless we've really matured in Christ and we understand what godliness and contentment gives. So it's really, it's really about your heart. So I would, I would say this, you know, having money is not bad. Money having you is terrible. If your motive is, man, I just, I just want to like make more money, make more money, make more money because you just want more money because you think that's going to make you secure, that's going to make you safe, and that's going to make you happy. That's a super dangerous love affair. If you want coin for the sake of furthering the kingdom and you know what that looks like and you're generous already, here's what people say all the time. Well, when I get some money, I'll be generous. No, you won't. Your heart's already jacked up. Like, that's, that's not how it works. You're in a dangerous love affair. You actually love money more than you love the kingdom. You actually love money more than you love God. So it's not, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, not money itself. Money's indifferent. It's a tool. And if you know how to use it, here's what I believe. If you use it correctly, God can get more to you because he knows and he can trust you with it. But if you, like, lock it all up and you care about you, yourself, and I, it's probably going to be very difficult for you to ever hold on to any of it anyway. Um, and the reason you're broke is because you're not generous. Like, that's just the truth. So don't, don't fall into that dangerous love affair. The third one. Look at your neighbor say, number three. <laughs> Loving pleasure more than God. Loving pleasure more than God. 2 Timothy 3, 4 through 5. It talks about people in the, in the later times. So they'll be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, having have nothing to do with these kind of people. Pleasure simply means, by definition, uh, gratification or delight. And look here, I'm not saying that we can't have pleasure. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if that's like your deal, I want to be happy and have pleasure more than I want to follow God or I want to do what God says. Like if that's your deal, that's a very dangerous love affair. Because like your body, your soul, um, even your spirit, you need times of relaxation. You need vacations, and I think you should go and enjoy yourself. Don't ever take a vacation that's not fun, okay? Look at your neighbor and say, it's got to be fun. But look, it needs to be fun for everybody. Fun for Benet is sitting on the beach doing nothing. Fun for me is spearfishing a mile off the shore because I swam that far. 
Okay? It's got to be fun for both them. And if you're married, you should do that stuff with them, regardless if there's barracudas chasing you all day. Right? It's a, it's a good time, right? Amen. So, Mark, Mark 6, 31 to 33. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, Jesus said to them, come with me, be by, by ourselves in a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. So listen, having those times where you do experience pleasure, rest, relaxation, not wrong. What's wrong is when that's, that's your goal, when, it, when it's about Feeding the flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, feeding the flesh. First Peter says, dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain, abstain from sinful desires which wage war against your soul. Galatians 5, 16. Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. This is like a continuation of last week's conversation. If your goal is individual happiness which involves selfishness, and that's what, you, that's, man, that's what I'm striving for every single day, that's a dangerous affair. That's going to pull you away from Jesus. That's going to pull you away from enjoying the kingdom. The world is slick. They want to sell you something that's actually going to destroy you when God wants to invite you into an existence that's going to cause you to flourish. And so it's almost like, man, if I buy into the world's way of, I'm going to chase pleasure, chase pleasure, chase pleasure, you'll never, ever reach it. But it's inside the kingdom where there are, God says, pleasures in my right hand that you can experience pleasure even, check this, when you're suffering. And that's supernatural. And I know that sounds weird because that's not what the world says. But again, these are dangerous to love affairs. And the reason they're dangerous is because in some ways, from one perspective, they're not wrong. But from another, they are. And I think that's the, uh, the tension that we all have to be willing to live in and check ourselves on like a constant basis. Do, how much do I love God? Do I love God more than pleasure? Do I love God more than money? Do, like, do I really, really want to be with him more than anything else? So number four, loving self. Loving self more than God. I love me more than I love God. 2 Timothy 3.2. People, who, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient, ungrateful, and unholy. Now listen, I did not say don't love you at all. Like, you should love you. Because if you don't love you, you can't love your brother as yourself. Everybody follow, big up what I'm putting down? All right, real hard to love somebody if you don't love you. But what I am saying is you cannot... Love you more than you love God. When, when you are more selfish than selfless, even in your serving of others, that's a dangerous love affair. What do I mean by that? How many of you know you can be selfish in your motive to serve? Like, man, I just want to pat on the back. I want to be recognized. Um, here's, a, here's another one. And it, again, just a little wrong. Makes me feel really good when I help you. Those are all bad motives. Why? Because it's just all about me. It's, it's not about me pointing you to Jesus. It's not about me helping you understand the power of God. It's not about me being Jesus' hands and feet. It's about me fulfilling my own selfish desires while, check this, doing a good thing. Which is why it's such a dangerous love affair. Because loving you is not wrong. Unless you love you more than you love God. So, so you gotta, you got to want to rest and walk in this tension and stay connected to the Holy Spirit. Do you, do you, in some ways, and it depends on your personality, how many of you in here are like list-driven, tell me what to do, I'll do it, I don't, we don't need to talk about it, I don't, you ain't even got to check my feelings. How many people in here? Okay, all of you raise your hands, okay. All right, because I told you to, so just, how many of you like to be told, just tell them what to do, do. all right, raise your hand. Okay, listen, between me and you, I'm down with legalism. You're like, well, no, wait a minute. Listen, no, listen. That's what I'm telling you. Just give me a list, Lord. Like, just, if you could just tell me what to do, I'll do it. Because you know what's hard? Hey, Dan, just flow in the Spirit. It'll be all right. <laughs> Not all right. How many of you know that's not, not, not all right? Because how many of you ever feel this way? I feel like that's the right thing to do. And the Bible says if I'm listening to the Spirit, can't go wrong. 
How many of you ever did that and went real wrong? Like, real, not even a little bit wrong. Like, you found you was in a ditch, and you're like, oh, my dang, what in the world? How did I get over here? It's because the culture that we live in is about, hey, hey, just do what you feel, man. If it feels good, it's probably good. Well, if you don't know the word, you have no idea if it's good, bad, indifferent. You just kind of, you just kind of hanging out, and we get in all kinds of trouble. So when I, I'm not like, listen, the truth is, I do not want legalism to determine if I'm heavenly bound or not. Like here, don't hear me. No, 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 no. I want grace. I just want the list with a lot of grace on it. Right? Just. In this particular instance, just tell me what to do. How many single people want the list on dating? Because opinions 5, 6 don't say it. <laughs> it's like, what? Do I, I don't even, t- t- Tinder, hookup apps? I don't, well, okay, I can guarantee you that's in there. Don't be sliding, sliding right trying to find somebody to hook up with. Bad, look at your name and say, bad idea. How many, know, how many know that's a bad idea? Look at all, look at all the hands. Is that from experience? Or wisdom. Yeah, there's no hands on that one. Like, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. So, like, there are some things, but like, even let's just say you like love Jesus, you're trying to date in a godly manner, be single, do all the right things. How many know that list ain't in there? You're like, come on, God, just tell me. Just tell me. Now, look, how many married people we have in here? Yeah, shoot, yeah, guess what? You got a list. Ephesians chapter 5, go read it. Just do that, but put some grace on it. How many know you can't do Ephesians 5 like perfect, right? Like it's, it's difficult. So there are some in there, and I wish it was true for every single one. So when the Bible says, man, look, keep in step with the Spirit, well, you got to know what the Spirit is saying. you got to know what the Spirit feels like. you got to know what the Spirit sounds like. And let me tell you what it feels like, sounds like, smells like, tastes like. It still sounds, smells, tastes, feels like the Word. If it's contrary to the word, you do not do that. And if he's like, well, I don't know. I can't find it. I read Leviticus. Not in there. Anybody ever read Leviticus? <laughs> okay, so it's, I don't know what to do. Find somebody that's been doing the journey longer than you and do this. Get wise counsel. Look, look, don't ask your jacked up friend. Right? How many know that? Don't ask the person who's doing worse than you. Okay? This is not, for somebody email. I didn't say they were, you were better than. They just making unwise decisions more than you are. Don't ask that person for wisdom. Because you know what? They ain't got it. <laughs> right? So, so, like there are some things and some steps. But you can't love you more than you love God. Or your feelings will jack you every time. So that brings us to the last one. This one might be the hardest. Can't love the world more than you love God's kingdom. You can't love the world more than you love God's kingdom. 1 John 2, 15 to 16. Do not, look at your name and say do not. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. Look at your name and say, dang. Do do y'all ever read the Bible and go, Mm. And not because it's good. How I many you know you, you somebody's preaching, they said something good, like, mmm, amen. How I many you ever read the Bible and go, mmm? Like something stank. You know, there's a difference, right? You ever smell something bad and go, mmm. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love for the Father's not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. James 4.4. 4. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship? Look, we, we step down. We didn't step up. We started out, love the world. And we can all go, all right, all right, all right. I don't love the world. But are you friends with it? Hmm. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enemy against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Love of the world will actually cause you to walk away from what God wants you to do. 
Listen to this, 2 Timothy 4.10. For Demas, because he loved the world, has deserted me and has gone into Thessalonica, Crescens, and has gone to Galatia and Titus and Dalmatia. God loved the world so much that he quit doing what God called him to do. And Paul, like, legit calls him out and says, don't be like this guy. And the scripture's super plain. Well, why is this, why is this so hard? I think, it's the, I, think it's the, I think it's the hardest of all the dangerous love, love affairs. Why? We can see the world, can't we? Hard to see the kingdom sometimes. But I can see the world. I can put my hands on the world. Everybody say the world. It's where we live. Yes, we're citizens of heaven. Yes, we're already there, but not yet. But the truth is we walk, eat, sleep, and breathe in this place 24-7. It's where we make money. It's where you have a job. And listen, I try to be super spiritual and say, no, I'm in the kingdom now. But every now and then it's hard because I know I'm here in the world. Which is why Jesus says, be in it, just don't be of it. It's where we realize ourselves and our potential. I mean, it's the, it's the place that you and I exist. And it's also, the world is also in constant opposition of God's kingdom. Always. And, and sometimes it, it sells you something that feels like it should be okay. Because the world will tell you, love yourself. Love yourself more than anything. Because it's all about you. and It's all about your feels. Get all up in them. Do whatever feels right. And the Bible doesn't say not to love yourself at all. It says don't love yourself more than God. Well, if I love God and I love others, Jesus says all the commandments are taken care of. So, so it's not like it doesn't say not to, but it is this place of this tension where you can't love yourself more than God. It, listen, the Bible never really condemns money. It just condemns the love of it. So don't, man, don't love money more than God. It's going to get you. Paul says, man, it's going to jack your life all up because you become stingy. And that's not the life that God has for you. You know what else? It, I didn't cover this, but you know what else it says? Don't love your family more than you love God. Can't love your brother, sister, mom, dad, uncle, cousin more than you love God. And you go, well, now wait a minute. These are people I do life with every single day. And it's, it caused me to honor my mom and my dad and to love my brothers and myself. So what's the deal? The deal is God has to be first all the time, every day, in every situation. What's he say? If you seek me and my kingdom or kingdom ways of doing things, First, I must say first, first, then the rest of this won't be a problem. It's when you get out of whack. But look, it, isn't, it, isn't it hard not to love the world we live in? And I know you're like, no, 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 it's jacked up. It's crazy. No, no, I, I understand that. But like, we do get caught up in its system. We do get caught up in that striving and going and doing. And we, we can't even imagine... Go into heaven. Because if you fall too in love with money, yourself, stuff, things, the world, everything that I list, then, then heaven is not something you look forward to. Because you know none of that stuff will be there. Like it, it confuses and frightens you when the picture of heaven is painted. What are we going to do? You're going to hang around the throne all day and sing. What? Can't I mow a yard or something? I mean, can you imagine 24 7 in worship service? Pray, ain't going to be no love as a battlefield played. It's just going to be Jesus, Jesus, holy, 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 all the time. The reason that frightens, or at least let me not push my dick's function on you. The reason that frightened me when I was less mature, I couldn't imagine. Listen. I could not imagine sitting in a church service all day, every day, singing. I'd be like, don't, at some point, don't the Lord get it? <laughs> like, holy, 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 all day, can I have a break? Got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Got to go take care of something. Like, really, this, I'm, I'm just being honest. And maybe somebody here relates and the, the rest of you can judge me. But, like, this whole faith walk is a real struggle, and these are super dangerous love affairs that want to pull you away from what a pure, deep, powerful relationship with Jesus feels like, sounds like, tastes like. It's fulfillment. It's glory. It's all of those things, but what do you have to do? Oh, man, it's easy. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. 
Take up your cross. Follow him every single day. And you know what? Here's the kicker. If we love the praise of others more than God, money more than Jesus, pleasure more than Jesus, our personal lives more than Jesus, family members more than Jesus, the world more than Jesus, the Bible says we're not worthy to be his followers. How many want to be counted worthy one day? Well done, my good and faithful servant. Then don't get caught up in a dangerous love affair. One that looks real. And yes, love is a battlefield. Why is it a battlefield? Because you're always fighting to keep Jesus first. It's a battle every day. Something's always vying to be first in your life. Can't be your spouse, can't be your kids, can't be your job, can't be your paycheck, can't be your family, can't be, can't be anything but God. God says there can be no other gods before me. And that's not because he's arrogant or a narcissist. It's because he knows he's the best thing in all creation for you. And if you keep your eyes on him, do things his way, hey, it's all good. So you have to be willing to fight. You gotta fight the fight of faith every single day. Because the promise is, this is so hard to explain. And this is, you just have to you just have to like chew on this for a while. Jesus is coming back. We're all gonna go to heaven, and just so you know, the new heaven and new earth is actually gonna be here. You're not going off somewhere someday. Go read your Bible, I promise. Um and there's going to be all these mansions, and what you do in this world determines the size of your mansion, um, the amount of crowns you have to be able to lay at the key, your king's feet when you're worshiping him. What we do here echoes in eternity. And we can't let the world's system of desire and love rob us of an eternal opportunity of continued greatness. But even if that's your motive, you're going to miss out. I've, I've made this mistake before, and I, maybe you haven't, but I've, I've shared Jesus with somebody. And I told them about the benefits of being in the kingdom, believing that would convince them to get saved. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's a bad sales pitch. How many of you ever were sold the benefits of something? You bought it, and it didn't do what you thought it should do. Have you ever had that happen? Let me tell you what's going to happen. If, if we continue or ever do that, you're going to sell the benefits, and here's what you're going to sell. You're going to sell the blessing of God, the power of God, the fulfillment of God, which is all true. Listen to me. It's all true. It's just a dangerous affair. It's a dangerous reason to enter the kingdom. Do you know why you have to enter the kingdom? Because you know you're a sinner going to hell. You are fried, toasted, burnt, dead, and without the love of the Savior, it's crap. Well, what do I get if I get in? Yes, yeah, saved. From what, you? Well, yeah, but what's the benefits? You know what, we don't really even talk about that right now because if you don't see yourself in need of a savior, then what you're doing is you're buying a new car. And as soon as that car gets a tick, a wobbly wheel, you're out. In America, we sell the benefits of Christianity without people understanding you are in sin, a sinner, and without a savior, it's over. You're dead. Would you like to be alive? What's it like to be alive? How about you just embrace for the reason God calls you to and trust him on the other side of that? Are there benefits? 100%. Can't be your reason, though. Because if it is, dangerous love affair. And you're, you will, listen to me, you will walk away from God and his church if that's the reason you started coming. If you started coming because you needed a better marriage, a better life, I need some benefits, have you ever got a job because the benefits were good and then you found out they're not so good and you left that job? Yeah, people do that to Christianity all the time. Well, this is not what you said. No, let, wait. And we try to talk them into staying. No, wait, wait, JP, wait. What, what I meant, what? he'll give you peace. If, well, it ain't showed up yet. I don't have peace yet. Yeah, but like just stay in it a little bit longer. Have you ever heard that? Just keep... Just, 
And you got like no power in there, no desire in there. Why is that? It's because you bought into the kingdom for its benefits, not for salvation. That's a dangerous love affair. So there is resurrection available right now, not later. This is what we forget. This is the time when Holy Spirit moves and what he's looking to do is to raise dead people to life. People who are dead in their trespasses and sins because they don't know God. Jesus says in John 3, 17, I didn't come, I'm not coming to condemn the world. You're condemned already. I'm coming that you may be saved. The Holy Spirit's moving right now. Online, in this room, please, please, never, ever take that for granted. And if you know you're born again, saved, then this is the time you start praying. Because you've been in this room long enough, you know where it's going. And you can feel through the power of the Spirit where it's about to land. Don't check out now. Don't get up and go to the bathroom now. This is, this is the miracle minute. Because there's somebody here who I promise has bought into the kingdom for the benefits and nobody ever told you what I just told you and Holy Spirit is now drawing you legit to him because you just saw yourself as a sinner. That's what the gospel does. It wants to save. So every head bowed, every eye closed. If you've fallen into a dangerous love affair with any of the things that I just said, it doesn't mean you're not saved. It means you've been deceived or you just chose unwisely. Take this time to repent to God for cheating on him and let his loving arms embrace you. If you're in here and you're like, man, I totally started coming started hanging out, tried to get into the kingdom for the benefits, but I never saw myself as dead in my trespasses and sins. If that's you, this entire auditorium and all of heaven is praying for you, that you'd have the courage to surrender your life to Jesus. The Bible says, confess with your mouth that he is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. What does that mean? He paid the penalty for your sin that he doesn't want you to have to pay for. But you've got to believe that. And then confess he's Lord. What does that mean? He runs the show, not me. So if you're in this auditorium and that's you, then pray something like this. You can pray with me or pray something like this. God, I am a sinner. that I believe in this moment and for every day for the rest of my life that you paid for my sin by dying on the cross and you conquered sin and death by raising from the dead. God, forgive me of my sin. Holy Spirit, take up residence in my life that I may walk with you and learn from you. In Jesus' name, amen.